Hello everyone, Reza here with another tutorial. Welcome to my channel. We haven't done a how-to video uh, in a while, so I thought it's about time to make a quick tutorial and to show you how to apply displacement to your material using the modeling editor tool inside Unreal Engine 5. Let's get started. All right, first things first, I'm just going to launch Unreal Engine. We really don't need any scenes. Uh, we just need a few textures and maps, which I will provide to you. All right, we have the Unreal Project browser open. I'm just gonna go with just a blank scene. All right. First things first, I'm just going to look at here. We don't have the modeling plugin available and shift f5 takes us to fracture which is not quite the same thing so first things first i'm just going to go to plugin and load in the modeling tool editor click we are going to use that we don't want to update and we restart the engine now with that out of the way if i check we have access to modeling editor tool, shift F5. Uh, probably don't need the floor. Uh, what I can do is to go to modeling and place in a simple 2D rectangle. Um, I can just increase its size a little bit and I'm gonna press F on it. We don't need this uh, play start. You can just hide it or delete it. We don't need that. All right. Um, next is to look after our hierarchy. So I'm going to right click, create a brand new folder called Reza. And within that, we only need two folders. One is holding materials. And within that material, I'm going to create a brand new material and I'm going to call it disp underscore master material and probably drag and drop that into my model. We're not going to use uh, an instance for the time being, but feel free to create one for yourself. And the other folder is going to hold our textures. Now, that's probably the important folder that we need to be mindful of. Uh, your texture should have displacement. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm going to use. So this, is the albedo map that I'm going to use. I have ambient occlusion. Uh, I have a gloss, which I'm not going to use. Roughness, I'm going to use. Specular, I'm not going to use because I'm actually using roughness workflow. So uh, glossiness and specularity are the two maps that I won't be using. And of course, I have a displacement map. So uh, I'm just gonna bring all of them these maps so let's review them together that's albedo uh, basically for albedo we want in srgb to be on it's a bit washed out so i'm going to give that a 2.2 of rgb curve and in case if you're wondering what rgb curve is it actually raises linear uh, space uh, rgb color using this value so that should work just fine i'm going to close that probably going to sort of dock that to the side for time being i'm going to go use ambient occlusion for ambient occlusion i am going to do the same thing i'm going to increase the ambient occlusion rgb curve to get a slightly better result and uh, with normal well it doesn't actually recognize this as normal so i'm just going to go to world normal map and compression to normal map so now it recognizes the map as normal i'm going to save and close and for roughness again i'm going to increase rgb curve to 2.2 
Uh, yep, that gives me a slightly better result. And again, these are completely optional. You really don't need to do that. What you need to be mindful of is actually this map here, right, right here, displacement. Now, um, you can use height maps as displacement. That's fine. You can see this one is a bit blurry and it's a, an EXR image. Now, remember, we inside Unreal, if you want to use displacement using this method, try not to have packed maps. What do I mean by that? Packed maps are type of maps where displacement is in one channel, then ambient occlusion is another channel, then roughness probably is another channel, maybe metallic is in one channel. So for those, it becomes a bit difficult to extract a channel using modeling editor tools. So preferably have the displacement as an individual file. Either get it from Mari or export it from Substance Painter or use Quixel Bridge. In my case, that's what I did. And uh, just download the displacement. There you can just log into uh, Megascan, download the map uh, that comes with the albedo file and just have it as a separate file. Uh, the reason it's bl uh, red is because I don't have anything on the other channel. So if I go to um, red and turn off blue and green, that's displacement. That's basically what I see. All right, that's the only thing you needed to know. Let's uh, go to the next chapter and see how we can use displacement to our advantage. Displacement is uh, under deform, which is in charge of deforming <laughs> your object. So you can see under deform, we have sculpting, smoothing, offsetting, warping, uh, doing lattice, which we practice in previous videos, and of course, displacement. Before I apply displacement, I would like to actually put something as a material on this model. So I'm just going to go to my material tab, double click on it and uh, dock it right next to my main window. And let's bring those maps that we've had before. So I'm just going to select all of these guys, move them to textures. So everything is nice and organized. And then I'm going to go here, select all five, drag and drop in here. Now, we all know how it works with this one. SRGB goes to basic. I'm going to move that to a side. Next one is our, and if you get confused, look at the left hand side in the material expression texture base. It actually says what pass you're using. Ambient occlusion, and it's set to linear color because SRGB was off. We're using a single channel, red, to ambient occlusion. Next one is roughness. So I'm just going to pick the red channel uh, or even better, I can put get the uh, green channel and set that to roughness. Green channel usually holds uh, better information for roughness. And I'm going to go to um, normal. It's an RGB map. We know what to do. Uh, this directly goes into normal. Fantastic. I'm just going to save and apply and gonna go in here and there we have our map all good to go. But you can see, although I've applied normal, we really don't see any displacement. The object itself is not really moving, not to mention the resolution is just not enough to give us what we want. As a matter of fact, you can actually give this model a little bit of um, a resolution to begin with. So we get a slightly better result. So with that, I'm just going to give that 10, 10 division. You really don't need to go too high because you will see in a second how this gets controlled through the displacement node itself. It's just going to give us a little bit of buffer so we don't have just a few lines. Now we have a little bit more resolution, better triangles, uh, better subdivision to hold the displacement map. I'm gonna go to material, drag and drop, drop it in there. Now the time has come to use displacement node. With that selected, I'm just gonna click on displacement and instantly you can see uh, quite interestingly, we are getting something. Now it's not quite the displacement that we are hoping for simply because the displacement type is set to noise. So what we're seeing is just random noise 
on the model and we can see that through displacement type here which is set per lin and then another type of n noise is just random noise and we have constant and we have sine wave which is like a, a drop up and down type of wave pattern and of course we have texture 2d map and that is what we want and look what we have in the option we have displacement map which now we can navigate to textures drag and drop and that gives us displacement now we're talking we're getting actually really close to what we want now before i hit accept because it's one of those things that if you do uh, it's going to be really difficult to undo and i'm going to just change the light ever so slightly to see if i can get a slightly better angle those shadows will just give us more information like so now before i do that let's have a look at the wireframe if i go to wireframe you can see clearly the silhouette is changing but look what we have subdivision so i can actually go in here and give myself more information and even um, reduce the subdivision if i feel like the subdivision is too much so you can clearly see now how this is taking place uh, looks a lot better i can actually go in here and change the field of view to something like 45 so it's not giving us weird result but now you can see clearly that the subdivision works beautifully i can intensify it to seven to eight to nine and beautiful Control L to change the light and you can see definitely the silhouette of my model is changing if you look at the edges it's no longer flat and usually that's what makes maps like bump or normal a bit boring because they don't really change the silhouette of our model there we have it I mean that was really easy um, one node to do it all for you there's another method to create the illusion of displacement through parallax occlusion mapping which is a completely different story i will put together a tutorial on that now if at any point of time you feel like the scene is starting slowing down because you need to sort of duplicate this all across because of the number of triangles that you're dealing with well i've got a really simple solution to you for you you go to generate and navigate to this model right here of course another way of doing that is just to click on this folder with magnifier right next to it so it pops up right click go to nanite and enable nanite with that you can just duplicate it across and just get hundreds of them without experiencing slowdown in the scene obviously before you do that you need to accept otherwise unreal engine is going to crash uh, there's really not much to it if your displacement is on a different channel you specify that channel and uh, if you wish to uh, uv scale it in different axis or offset it uh, you can sh definitely do that so it lines up with your material let's say your material as is actually having some uh, texture coordinates and you're tiling your material in that case you apply the same number in here so your displacement is in line with your uh, uv coordinates inside the material editor uh, there is really not much to it to be honest with you and um, that is pretty much it again i love this really um, quick and easy method instead of the uh, parallax occlusion mapping which again still fakes the result this one doesn't i'm really really pleased with the new addition um, of this node inside the modeling editor node hope you found this video useful until another how-to video stay safe love you all see you next time